awesome. That's our data. We connect this to ggplot. Note that our package is called ggplot2, but the function is ggplot. If you want to make a histogram, one of the things that we have to supply is a numeric variable. So histogram is always made for numeric variable, not for factor variables. To let R know that we are using a particular variable, we have to use AES for aesthetics. And then you can say the X variable on the X axis is, I'm going to use this variable called total length. E-O-T-L-N-G-T-H. Once you have started this function ggplot, we'll not be using pipe after starting ggplot2, we'll be using a plus sign. So these lines will end with plus sign and not pipe. We have stated our aesthetics uh, that which variable, where it goes, it goes on x-axis. So now I'm going to say geometric shape, G-E-O-M underscore G-E-O-M histogram. We run and it creates a histogram. So this is a like very basic histogram. I will leave this here, but copy and paste and add few more features to make this histogram look more attractive or meaningful. Another uh, thing uh, that ggplot allows you is within aesthetics, uh, we can also add another variable using fill equals one of the factor variables. So red one is female and blue one is male. You can also play with like, uh, some features within geometric histogram. Let's say alpha equals how transparent this is. And then also add color equal black. So you see these bars will be colored with black. You can also add so GG title total length for male and female person. So as soon as you do that, the title is going to appear at the top. Our data is a very small data set like 104 and the bins by default is like 30 here. If you want to specify bins equal, something like this. So we can decide on number of bins and put it within the histogram. Let's add one more line. There is a function called facet underscore grid. And the variables that we can use, so it will plot histograms separately. It becomes much easier for you to compare and contrast. It uses exactly same scale. So comparison becomes easier. So same scales on the X and Y axis. If at all, there is a very clear cut pattern, it will emerge very easily. Sorry, I have a question with the alpha equals 0.5 and the bins equals 10. What does that mean? Uh, your question is uh, with what does so, uh, alpha equals 0.5 mean yes it's the transparency like how transparent your histogram is if you look at uh, histogram the background is slightly visible right uh -huh. if you do 0.2 it will be more transparent oh okay but if you do like a higher value it will be less transparent in fact 100 percent means opaque oh, okay and for the bins equals 10. When we specify number of bins because our data set is small, uh -huh. uh, right now, if you see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine, and then this one, 10, 10 okay. bins. But default was using like 30 bins and we were not seeing any clear cut pattern. The data or the bars were like too much scattered. Okay. And one rule of thumb is square root of N. If your sample size is 100, do square root of n as number of bins. So 100 okay. means around 10, you'll be better off. Okay. Okay. So facet grid, I did only as per one variable, but you can use actually one more. You can say, obviously, factor variable. Another one could be site. And we know that there are seven sites, right? So seven times two. So we can have 14 different histograms. So these are the sites like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sites. And then you have male versus female. So I'm going to simply copy this and paste. The only thing I'm going to change is instead of histogram, we'll say density. So geometric shape, G-E-O-M underscore density. It just tries to capture the pattern of histogram. 
in a histogram, there are three things uh, which we are interested in. One is where most of the values are concentrated and how much variability is there in the histogram or data. And third thing we are interested in for a histogram, when we are looking at one variable is shape. Is it symmetric? Is it right skewed, left skewed, bimodal, irregular? Okay, let me copy and paste. Instead of the last line, let's use another option called facet underscore wrap. We can use this tilde sign below escape button. Let's use side as a variable. So both male and female density plots are put together in the same plot. So let's copy paste. We'll keep density and we'll also add histogram. So let me simply copy this here. Okay, so in this one, I'm just copying the previous one with both histogram as well as density. Let's just keep SCX because it has only two and let's see what we get. So you'll immediately notice that the histograms are very clearly visible, but the density plot, this tiny little at the bottom, it's not expanded the way it should be. We'll have to do something with density plot. And what I'm going to do is I'll keep alpha 50% change the color to maybe red. For density, bins are not that much needed. I will remove that and put aesthetics y equals. So let's try four times whatever count we have. We have to do it in a special way like dot dot count dot dot, something like this. So I'm multiplying the y axis by four, hoping that this will become bigger. Let's probably do 3.5. It does look better compared to the previous one. And then if you do right, it can look like this. I have a question. How do we guess that the scale number, that the scale factor? Uh, how do we decide on this number? Yes. If we just leave it, it was looking too, too tiny. If I go back to the plot, it was looking very tiny. So I just use a number, trial and error, and four seemed to be slightly higher, so I came down. If we want something that works, there's no perfect number here. 